What is up? Rad Potential YouTube! Alright, so this is another Rad Formational segment. And I think you're going to like it. So, what we're talking about today is rotary engine flywheels and all your options. And we're going to go through all of it. Because I'm pretty sure I have a majority of it covered here. Besides maybe like one setup in particular. So, when you have a rotary engine, you got rotors. You got things that spin. Well, things that spin need to be balanced. And if they aren't balanced, what happens? They rattle apart. Much like a bench grinder with a really unfortunate death wobble, your rotary engine will do the same thing. So, each series of rotors has its own balance characteristic, right? So a series four is balanced like a series four, and a series three is balanced like a series three, and a 12A is balanced like a late 12A and an early 12A. So each one's different. So a couple of things that are the same though. Series 5 and Series 6 share the same balance characteristics when it comes to a flywheel. Series 4 is the same. It's its own thing. Series 3, which is GSLSE, and old school stuff, so like r rotary trucks, um, your old 13Bs, so a GSLC and the old 13Bs share the same. And then the late model 12As, so um, 81 to 85, and the early model 12As, or the 81 to 85 are the same, and then the early model 12As, which are 78 to 80, are the same as well. Now I don't know, I've never owned one of the old school 12As, like Twin Dizzy or all that stuff, so we're just playing with what we got here, and that's not really the one that I don't have. But the FDs also, I don't have any pole style clutches to show you. So if you have an FD and you have a pole style setup still in your car, stock FD trans, I wouldn't say you're on your own, but it's its own animal. So, now, transmissions. For RX-7s, there's two big diameters. Okay, FDs aside, two diameters. You have NA diameter and turbo diameter. So what that means is the bell housing is bigger or smaller, and the starter is different and it's in a different location, you have to have the right flywheel for that. So you can't run, like we'll say this 12A flywheel in an RX-8 Trans, you have to run the big diameter flywheel, which, just to show you the difference, there's your difference, it's about a half inch overall bigger in every direction. Here I can set it down on top of this, these are both NA flywheels there. You can see that it's bigger, about pretty good amount. So, you gotta match your flywheel diameter. Now, there are people who have successfully drilled and mounted a Turbo 2 or RX-8 starter. You can clock it at an angle, like drill a new hole for one of the mount holes, and get it to ride on an NA starter. However, I've never done it, so I'm not gonna tell you to do it, but I'm pretty sure you can find some data on it if you just do some quick Googling on the forums. And it doesn't seem like it'd be that hard if you can, you know, maybe eye it up and stuff, but I've never messed with it. I've just always ran different flywheels. So, now you might ask, what if you want to run an RX-8 Trans on your 12A? It bolts up to the back of the motor, you know, fits no problem. Much like this car behind me, I got an RX-8 transmission in it. And that's kind of the reason we're doing this, because I had to dig out my parts for it. So, on automatics, there's a thing called a counterweight on the back. So instead of having a big bulky flywheel, like this, all one big piece with your big two and one eighth or a 54 millimeter nut. They had this counterweight with a flat flex plate bolted to it that the torque converter went on. Each series has its own counterweight. So, for example, I have this one sharpied with a series four, and this one is a series three. So this one will work on like GSLC, repo, old school stuff, and this is series four. So now notice. There's a difference, right? You can see that this is obviously thinner than that, etc. From the front, they generally all kind of look the same. I mean, you're not here in person, but you can see that cut's a little bigger than that cut. If you hop on Mazda Tricks website, there is a guide for how to determine which counterweight you have. So check it. Next thing, with this counterweight, you can see you have six bolts, which means you can take any standard balanced six bolt flywheel like this and bolt it to that for any of them. So like this is actually for an RX-8, this is for a Turbo 2, so this is like your 9 pound flywheel, I think this one's 13, you can get this from like Racing Beat or something with a replaceable pad and this is just a solid like Fidanza one or something on Amazon. 
or off eBay. So you take this and you bolt it to that. And then you can put, they have NA diameter ones of these, they've got turbo ones, they got all the deals. So you can get the right diameter flywheel to put on your counterweight. Then you take your counterweight with your flywheel on it and you stick it on the back of the motor and you tighten that baby down. So what I'm going to show you right now, I'm just going to grab my little impact and I'm going to pop this clutch off. So this right here is what I'm going to use in the race car. Okay. Okay, so let me get all my rock washers off here so I don't lose them. Drop the bolt. Remember um, from the last video, which I will show you, these bolts are fine thread 12 millimeter. I don't know if that's focusing, it might be focusing on my face, but fine thread 12 millimeter. And on certain flywheels, you will have a bolt that is a shoulder bolt, and there is two specific holes on the flywheel that you will have to locate to put the right bolt in the right hole. The short ones will not work, or I wouldn't run it. So here you can see the shoulder bolt. You can see the variation there. Keep that in mind. Okay, moving on. Back to where we were. So, this is a Turbo 2 clutch. We're going to pop that off. Lay him over here. The actual clutch itself, or I guess that's the pressure plate. That's the clutch. So this is what this setup looks like all put together. So you can see we've got the surface for the big nut to go on. This is what the back of this looks like. Notice I have it marked 79 to 80 12A. And that's because we're putting this big diameter flywheel in this counterweight on my 79 to 80 12A to go into my 1980 RX7 with a turbo two, or a turbo two with an RX8 transmission. So I will make another video showing the bottom of this car and kind of how the RX8 transmission fits. Um, the gist of it is. The shifter winds up perfect for an SA because the shifter is further forward. You need the Turbo 2 to GSLSE rear drive shaft, or you can get your drive shaft customized to fit the transmission. Um, the length is the same, it's just the yoke needs to be swapped out. And you will just need to get a RX8 um, starter, and then you run the big clutch and stuff. Turbo 2 clutch, RX8 clutch are the same thing. So keep that in mind when you are shopping around. So that pretty much sums it up. So what I am going to do is I am going to pop this off real quick and put that on and just kind of show you what it looks like on the motor. It kind of has some awkward like spacing and stuff with just like how far away it sits. So let's do it. Alright, so once you get that popped off, you grab your favorite meaty hammer, and I don't have mine here, so I gotta run over to the house and grab my hammer. I'll be right back. Alright, so we're back with the hammer. So this is tips and tricks. CJ's here now. We had to do his flywheel up. And uh, to, in order to get this off, you're gonna try and pull on this thing. It isn't gonna come. I promise. So, take your best friend hammer, find you a nice spot right out here, okay, on the edge. It gets a little harder when you have a flywheel like this, when you have all these little raised guys you gotta hit, because you don't wanna miss and like hit that and mess it up. So, leave your nut on a couple threads, nice spot right here, one good pop, oh, didn't come loose, one good pop, there it came loose, maybe I just was being weak with my one hand, and you'll see that it breaks itself loose, and then it'll slide right off just like that. So that's the old one off. If you're doing this, always inspect your rear main seal and your pilot bearing. Make sure your keyway doesn't go away. Then you're gonna grab your freaky fresh new one right here. You're gonna line that keyway up the best you can. I apologize for not being able to show this, but you can line the keyway up, push that baby on. The proper torque spec specification, if you watched my previous video, is 47.6 Ugga Duggas, and that's how tight that goes. Grab your biggest impact and run it home. So, this you can kind of see. It looks a little awkward with the spacing, but if you did notice while looking at this flywheel, the ring gear is pretty far away from the engine. It just fills it up with all the weight of the big flywheel. So, 
Same logic on a piston engine. Lightweight flywheel is going to give you faster revs but less torque. So in drift, you might have to clutch kick it 10 times with a lightweight flywheel versus like a heavy flywheel, you might only do it twice. So keep that in mind when you're flywheel shopping. But for now, that's the end. That's the little Swiss cheese flywheel on there. And I will see you next time. Comment below with any questions regarding any of this stuff. I know it's mildly confusing and there's always people asking questions, so let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, stay red. Keep it red. Keep stuff running.